Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Summerlin again, and today we're going to be looking at mostly citation. Now I'm using a paper here that I wrote in 2011, so it's an old paper. Now originally it was written in MLA, but I have translated it to APA so that it can help you. I'm using one of my papers because I don't want to put somebody else's business out there like that. This is my business, I'm going to put it out there. Now. Your cover page should look like this. At the top you're going to have running head and in all caps you're going to have your short title. Here's your short title, here's a longer title. That's typically how we do it, but your short title should always be the same. Now this is what your header should look like, your title, your name, your class, uh, your teacher, your year. This is how that should be. On the second page you'll notice that the the pagination, the header is different than it is on the first page. And if you don't know how to do that, then go back and watch my video on how to do APA headers. So today we're going to be looking at, like I said, mostly citation, but here are some other things. Now my title and my hook, they go together. Hooks are difficult to write. Sometimes you're either good at it or you're not. I went with starting off my paper about children's literature with some really powerful words like murder and death. Because you think, oh, children's literature, Winnie the Pooh, murder and death. So it's that those harsh words that sort of create interest. You can do that same type of thing. Or you can tell a story. Stay away from rhetorical questions. Those are lame. Now this paper is, honestly, it's about Harry Potter and a series of unfortunate events. I have taken it and cut it down and changed some things. It was a much longer paper. It's about 35 pages long. As you can see, it's about six pages right now because I just wanted to show you very specific elements. One thing you'll see in this first paragraph here is that there's not a thesis. That's because my thesis is actually down here. Uh, like I said, the page, the paper was very, very long. The longer your paper is, the longer your introduction tends to be. But this highlighted green section is my thesis. Successful children's literature, such as Harry Potter and a series of unfortunate events, maintains a specific balance that young audiences crave, both a modicum of danger to create interest and believability, and at the same time distance from that danger to make them feel safe while reading. By allowing them to experience these ideas within the safety of a fantasy novel, Snicket and Rowling give these stories weight and longevity that will only increase their population, popularity with future generations. So this is what I'm going to discuss. This is my thesis. I'm going to talk about these books. I'm going to talk about the background of these books a little bit. Then I'm going to talk about how they create danger. They have danger in them to create interest and believability. The world is full of horrible, terrible things. Children know that, and we shouldn't be lying to them. So these books are successful because they have dark stuff in them, and children understand that. At the same time, they give them distance from those things to make them feel safe. So they've got these dark, dangerous things. That's paragraph one. Paragraph two is going to be about how they have dark, dangerous things in them, and it's safe because it's not happening to the child. It's happening to a different child. It's happening to Harry. So paragraph one, why the danger is there. Paragraph two, why the distance matters. By allowing them to experience these ideas within the safety of a fantasy novel, Snicket and Rowling give these stories weight and longevity that will only increase their popularity. So how making them dark is going to make them timeless. Paragraph three. That's how your thesis can become your paragraphs. Now moving through the rest of this. Here is a citation. All right. Now, when you have a citation in APA format, you need to put the author and then the year of the work. So here, Bethlehem, 1976, states in the uses of enchantment, children need these types of stories to help them make sense of the world around, a world within and around them. Then you see what we call a block quote. Now, since your paper is only five pages long, you may only use one block quote, because as you see, it takes up a lot of space. If you use more than one block quote, I will be taking points off because you are artificially inflating your paper. Honestly, you don't need block quotes at all, but if you choose to use one because it's really, really important to your argument, you get one. Everybody gets one. But how do you do a block quote? Well, you have to introduce the author right there. Then you're going to put a colon before you start the quote. This is a quote from that book. You notice there are no quotation marks. It's just written. It's indented one whole space. So if you backspace this a little bit, 
it's indented one whole space and it's all the same it makes a block you do you put a period at the end of the quote you put parentheses the page number and then there's no period there so again author year colon quote no quotation marks period parentheses page number close parentheses no period then you start your paragraph with no indention you're continuing on with your paragraph this is how you do a block quote it should look exactly like this it should not look like this it should not look like this it should not look like this it need it should not look like this all of that is wrong it should look exactly like this now moving on let's scroll through the rest of this paper I've got another quote here so perhaps most importantly these stories remain a valuable source of education for younger minds due to their subtle moral and social lessons which convey quote the advantages of moral behavior not through abstract ethical concepts but through that which seems tangibly right and therefore meaningful end quote if I'm not introducing the author before the quote I need to introduce or give credit to the author after this is an in-text citation so author comma year comma p period page number and then the period goes behind the parentheses because you've got to make this citation a part of the sentence you do not make it its own sentence so that putting a period there would be wrong putting a period there would be wrong you include the citation in its sentence all right let's scroll along all right here's another good example Templeton et al some of you are using the et al but here's what the et al means et al means and everyone else you use et al when you have three or more authors so if you have one author no et al two authors no et al three authors no et al more than three at all so this is Templeton let's scroll down to the works cited page to see how many people Templeton is so we've got Templeton King Lovecraft and Bachman that is four people that is why we have at all so scroll back up to Templeton there so if you have four or more I think I said three or more earlier but four or more Templeton at all here's the year then we start our quote over here Ooh, this is a mistake that should be lowercase at the end here you might notice NP NP stands for no page if you are using an article that does not have page numbers you put NP to indicate no page if you are using an article that has no date you put ND for no date if you are using an article that has no date and no page please make sure that it's still a really good source and not a really crummy source that is up to you to judge make it a good decision now let's continue we've got another quote from Bethlehem 1976 we've got page 8 where's his quote right there then we've got experiencing a tragedy like the loss of a parent when one is young is young has no equal and remains a very tangible fear for children this is something else I'm seeing a lot of if you're going to make a statement like this for instance if you're going to say racial tension is higher than in previous years if you're going to make that statement you have to prove it you have to include citation so I really should have proved that the loss of a parent has no equal and is so impactful I'm just assuming because I haven't provided any research so if I had this in a paper you would need to prove it some way all right continue to scroll initially this motif may have had a basis in reality often parents did not live long and children could find themselves on the street quite easily that's depressing but that's what this paper is about but right here we have a citation you might notice there are no quotes that's because this is a paraphrase citation yes even if you are paraphrasing or quote rewording end quote the author's argument you still have to give them credit so if you are paraphrasing or rewording you still have to include a citation when you include that citation you just do the authors and the year so for instance Kimball and Johnson are the people who wrote this article so I include the year I'm not including a page number because I'm not directly quoting them I'm paraphrasing them 
paraphrase is just the author and the year. So if I scroll all the way down to my references page, those are some of the things I'm looking at. You might notice at the beginning these are in alphabetical order, B, K, R, dash, dash, T. What are the dashes? If you have an article that is written by the same person, for instance, Rowling wrote Harry Potter and Deathly Howl, Howls, Hallows, she wrote Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, she wrote Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. You do not write their name three times. Instead, you write their name the first time and then dash, 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 dash to indicate that it's all the same author. Um, if they were written in the same year, so for instance, she was just really good and she wrote Deathly Hallows and Goblet of Fire in 2000. One of them is A. Oops. One of them is A. One of them would be B. So that you can differentiate between Rowling 2007A, I'm talking about this book. Rowling 2007B, I'm talking about this book. You can do the same thing if you have two, if you have an author for two different articles. If they're written in different years, then you don't need to worry about them. So if I'm quoting Rowling 2007, I know I'm talking about this book. If I'm quoting Rowling 2000, I know I'm talking about this book. If I'm quoting 98, she's done, I'm talking about this book. That's only if you have an article written by the same person in the same year. Sometimes that happens. If it's written in different years, just last name, year, last name, year. Um, the other thing that APA is very specific about is you do not include first names ever. Don't put first names in the paper. Don't put first names here. You go by initials. That is to decrease gender bias and racial bias. Because I don't know if M.A. Kimball is a female or a male. I don't know any ethnicity that that person might have. I just know it's M.A. Kimball. I know that's J.B. Johnson. I don't know anything else about them. So it helps the research to seem a little more fair. Um, here's how you do two people. Here's how you do more than, you know, three people. You need to list everybody. All right, I hope that I have helped you by going through this paper. Tomorrow's paper, tomorrow's YouTube video is going to go through a paper of a student um, that has agreed to let me look at her paper, and I'm going to edit it to show you how it might be graded in real time. Have a nice day.